Evening guys, how are you all doing? Hi, hello, hello, I'm just getting this right. How are you all doing? Hello to Crafty Calf, nice to see you again this week. I chatted to you last week when I was sat up in um, Weatherby. Tonight I'm back at home, actually no travelling this week. Um, I'm going to wait and let a few people join. It is live. Our seal. I'm not sure how I pronounce that, um, but yeah, you're very live. Hello, I'm live here in Oxfordshire, um, just in the evening. Hello, Petrina, all the way from Delaware. I'm in Oxfordshire. I'm going to talk about networking tonight. Just going to let a few more people join. Um, hello, Periscope user 2, and have you spotted that? Yeah, a couple of people would have spotted that. You're the first person, you're the first person to comment on it, actually. Um, Hi, Baldur's. I'm just trying to work out who I'm, I don't know who everyone is that I'm talking to on here. Hello, Lawrence. Sorry, now, now I know who you are. Um, of course, yeah, you have been on my Periscopes before. Um, hi, Rachel. How are you doing? Um, Goatees Rock, indeed. Hi, Lynn. Um, I've got loads of stuff to talk about tonight, actually. Had a really successful um, July. Don't know about you guys, but I sat here this morning doing a bit of an audit of my business and sat over the weekend. <laughs> Hello Sam, um, a few people are spotting what's gone on on my face, um, some more of you will. Um, Hello everyone, it's nice to see you all. Listen, actually you can do me a favour because I'm wanting to grow my audience on Periscope as well. Thank you very much, Lynn. That was what I was going to ask people to do. Um, hi Petrina, 3.30. Yeah, you spotted it's, um, I am without Beard. Listen, if you fancy sharing this for me, um, I'd be ever so ever so grateful because my audience is growing and it's really kind of you to share it. If you, hello everyone who's joining, um, hello Michelle, lovely to see you. I wonder who else has spotted what's happened to my face in the last couple of hours. Um, I'm talking about auditing your networking. I can actually talk about anything that you like during the Periscope re related to networking. Um, sometimes people ask me to talk about other stuff, but if you want to ask me any networking related questions, pop them down here and I'll try and answer them. If I don't get to them first time, if I'm talking about something else, then do remind me. <laughs> You've all spotted it, grow it back. Do you think so? Um, of course you saw me on Friday, Sam. Um, how do you audit my networking? I'm just gonna do this, excuse me for one second, because this is annoying me. Um, that's better, that's much better. I've been talking to a, a few people about this, auditing the networking. Um, and it's not actually what you think. It's not about what business you're getting out of it. It's not about what success you get out of it. But it's about taking a look every week at all of those conversations that you've had, or even every day, but doing it regularly. And making sure that you remember to follow up with everyone. Because really often we have... Nice to meet you too, as well, um, 77 Square, wherever you are. Um, but yes... Nice that I don't know how to um, don't know how to pronounce your name, but hi, hi, Amanda. Right. So anyway, auditing your networking. If you're at Four Networking or any other networking organisation, and you've had one to ones with people you've met at networking during the week, how often do you go back and look at those one to ones and make sure that you've actually followed up and taken action? Because. I, I coach people on networking skills and I was talking to one of them the other day and we went forensically through all of the conversations that she'd had that week. I look nothing like Ray Winston, um, that's a terrible insult to a great actor. We had a look at every conversation that she had had that week and there were one or two things in there that, that she'd missed, just got caught up with, with other stuff and stuff that really could be followed up on, which, which hadn't happened. So every week, go back through your networking. I use, da, 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 da. I give all of the time. Hi, hope you're well, yes, we're all well, hello. Um, yeah, go back every week and look at what conversations that you've had, what one-to-ones you've had, and if you said that you would take some action, please make sure that you would, would do it. And if you made a mental note to take some action, do it. One of the things that I found out recently or I think I knew, but someone confirmed it to me, is that a load of people sort of talk themselves out of stuff. Hello, nice to see you, you might have noticed. Um, a load of people talk themselves out of stuff after the event, they sort of talk, no, I don't look like anyone. Um, 
People talk themselves out of stuff after the event. They say at a networking event they're going to follow up with someone, and then they, someone said to me the other day they don't like to hassle people, they don't like to chase people. But actually, if, if you're in business and if you're good at what you do, then you owe it to the other people to chase up and follow up with them as well because they might just be looking to buy from you. One of the things that I've noticed, particularly in the last six weeks, is that when people think they're thinking of buying from you, they might buy from you, they're half interested. An awful lot of those sales can be knocked in really, really easily just by picking up the phone and talking to people, just by following up with them. I've done a load of follow-up recently. Do me a favour, ask me some questions about networking down here because I'm lacking inspiration tonight. Um, no. Rachel, I, I had an intro that I have spoken to twice, but I feel I'm being a pest now. Let me talk to you about that. There's, there's actively following up with people, that is being in touch with them regularly. Um, and there's only, you know, there, there's all of the statistics that people buy from you, I think, on average, on the seventh touch. But as well as the active follow-up, there's also the passive follow-up. And Rachel, you do that really well. That's put, I'm, I'm looking at my Twitter stream if I look over here. That's keeping yourself in people's field of vision, keeping yourself in people's timeline, being active on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, I've had a really decent speaking inquiry this afternoon and I've made sure I've connected with them on LinkedIn as well because whilst they're thinking about what they're doing, yes, you do, Rachel, you, you do. And, and that's sort of what I'm talking about, Sam. How do you avoid be, being by my stuff? Um, passively following up with people, staying in their timeline on Twitter, LinkedIn, Periscope. Yes, I absolutely have a system to, to follow up with people. Um, I'm being asked the question, would you set up a system to follow up? I, I use a CRM system. I make sure I record the details of, of everyone that I meet and speak to at networking events and then make sure that I set a, a follow-up action. Um, that I, there's a, a system then to, to follow up with people. Also, I, I run an email mailing list, so I'm keeping in touch with people that way as well. But I also passively follow up with people by keeping in their timeline, um, getting in touch with them on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, I'll talk to you about my system, Petrina. I'll talk about it now. That everyone that I meet, whenever I go out to a networking event, I'm looking over here now. Um, so I was at, I did some training um, the other day um, down in the southwest, um, and I picked up a, a few business cards. There's some of them there, um, and I promised to to follow up with people. So that's what I'm doing. Hello, lunchpreneurs. It's lovely to see you. In fact, if any of you guys watching want to follow me on Twitter after this, please do so. I'm at No Red Braces, um, same username as on here. And for those of you who don't know me, because I realised I haven't done the um, introduction thing yet, I'm Stefan, I'm the author of Business Networking for Dummies. There's me, hiding behind there. Um, that's my book, Business Networking for Dummies, which is an Amazon bestseller. I'm really proud of it. I've just started writing another book as well. I keep expecting to have some really big news about that, um, but the, the news keeps going back. Thank you. Um, the news keeps going back a day or so. If any of you want to share this, please do so. If any of you want to ask me any questions about networking down here, please do so as well. Um, thank you. Thank you, lunchpreneurs. I don't know everyone's name, I'm afraid. Hello again, Rachel Shallow. Um, Anyway, systems for following up with people. Yes, get yourself a CRM system. Ah, Lee Rickler. Am I better with remembering faces or names? I'm better with... Um, I think that's a really difficult question. I'm usually really good at tying up people's names with their Twitter handle. Um, but I suspect I know who you are, lunchpreneurs. Um, evening, Ian. Um, but I don't know who you are, and I am sorry for that. I'm sure you'll tell me in a minute. If you've got any questions about networking, um, ask them down here. Um, that's okay. Hello, Katia. Lovely to see you. Sorry I keep losing connection. No, don't worry about it. Um, happens to everyone on Periscope. I think it's one of the laws of Periscope that you have to, to keep dropping in and out. Um, so set yourself a system. Yes, I have a system that works for me. That depends... Um, what about in your normal life? Better with faces or names? I don't know if I can answer that. I'm sort of better with both, um, I think. I've got 
a, a ridiculous memory for things like telephone numbers and car registration plates. Um, I usually, usually, if I meet someone for the second time at a networking event, I'll remember their name. But it doesn't half help when people are, are wearing their badge at networking events because these days I do meet quite a lot of people and I don't always do it. Um, it's not that useful. I, I think if I... Um, if I stopped remembering car registration plates and telephone numbers that I could fit some, some better stuff in. Um, so systems for follow-ups. I've got a system which works for me. Um, that's often based on whether someone's inquiring about me coaching them, whether someone's inquiring about me speaking at an event, whether someone's inquiring about coming on the networking retreat. Um, I managed to get free adverts in that last sentence and none of you noticed. Um, but depending on whether someone wants me to coach them or wants me to speak at their event or wants to come on the networking retreat, I have slightly different ways of following up and I've got it built into my CRM. Um, hello, Kay from Kentucky. We are talking about networking on here um, and I'm also very happy for all of you to follow me on Twitter af afterwards. Um, horses to humans. I wonder if I know who that is. Um, Da, 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 da. Hello, Emma, horses to humans. Um, any more questions about networking? I'm talking, I live in Oxfordshire. Um, Luntrepreneurs, I live in Oxfordshire and I'm in West Oxfordshire at the moment. Katia, and I've just, there you go. I've just followed you on Periscope as well, Katia, and please follow me on Twitter as well. So I'm in Oxfordshire. Whereabouts are you? You're in London. Excellent. Um, I The next time I'm in London, I think the next big time I'm in London will be for the business show, um, which is early December at Olympia. So segmentation from the start and a follow-up sequence to suit the segment. Yes, exactly that. Exactly that. That's exactly what I do. Um, there's, I pref spoke to a guy today that prefers pay-as-you-go networks. Rachel, I'm going to come back to that. But I do, um, I do certainly have different ways of following up with people, whether it's um, for, for the different parts of my business, but also the passive following up, being active on social media, that's applicable to everyone because I've, as you can see, I have um, one of my clients here from, from Delaware, um, I've got people who I know from all around the UK and people who don't know me, but this is part of my follow up and also my um, tweeting, my Facebooking, my LinkedIn work, that's also part of my follow up which is passive follow up as well as actively following up calling people, emailing people, um, and, and, and the other things. The thing about paid for and um, pay-as-you-go networking events, Rachel, I'm, I'm sort of cool with it. Some people just prefer to pay-as-you-go networking events. I, I think there's more business to be had um, with a national networking organisation called for, such as For Networking. Um, I think there's 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 much more business to be had with something like that. There's much more opportunity, particularly national opportunity, but I also think it's sensible for people to go to their local pay-as-you-go networking events as well. I wouldn't do it instead of, personally. Um, when when for networking, BNI, Business Over Breakfast, all of these guys go to um, the trouble of building an infrastructure that you can use, I think that's worth paying for. That... You know, when I when I released the book, um, I organised a, a book tour um, around the UK, but I did it all within Four Networking because they had organised all of these lovely um, business people to, to get together in, in various places for me. So I didn't have to go to the trouble of inviting people, but I was able to go on a book tour. The relationships do develop over time as well. That was the a comment that was just put down the bottom. I, I had a, a really big event this year, um, I spoke at the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, a load of you guys know that, that came from a relationship that I started six years ago in networking and, and with someone that I'd kept in touch with over all of that time. It was a really important speaking gig for me, um, but it had taken six years for someone to build up the trust and confidence in order to refer me. And I think that's something that people often don't get about networking. If 
if you drop out, sometimes people forget about you. If you keep going consistently, then you give people the opportunity to build up that trust. Not, not everyone needs to. Hi, Joe. Joe, it's lovely to, to see you up in the northeast of England. Um, it's not always necessary. Some people buy from you on the first meeting. But other people are more cautious and take a little bit of time to build, build up that trust. And I think if you're there as a consistent force, if you're there as a bit of consistency in the network, then people will start to trust you just because you are there. P people are too focused on the short term. Um, I've been asked to talk about return on investment in networking many times. And I think people try and judge the return on investment based on sales rather than the return on investment based on the relationships they're building. Um, for example, 775 Square, um, I can't remember your name, sorry. But for example, you, you and I, I don't think, have had any sort of conversation or engagement until this evening. Um, and you're not going to buy anything from me this evening. But I really, really enjoy the, the fact that doing these periscopes, I've got... Jerome. Jerome, am I pronouncing it correctly? Um, with a name like Stefan, I like to pronounce other people's names correctly. But I really like the fact that I've built my audience tonight um, by being on here. Yaroon, okay, I'll get that right. Thank you for helping me out with that, Yaroon. Um, I'm sorry I got it wrong. Hi, Steve Harris. I think there is a return on investment, um, Rachel, and I like talking about the return on investment on networking, but people judge their return on investment on networking and social on far too short a time scale and sometimes they, they judge it based on one meeting, one engagement. I return on investments on social media got a lady their child back. Do I know that? Sorry. I, I'm probably missed excuse me, I probably missed that story. Um but I think people judge their return on investment on far too short a time scale. Um, whereas actually, I, I've never seen your foresight. I shall have to come and listen to it. Um, they judge their return on investment on far too short a time scale, and they probably judge their return on investment on the wrong things. That's to say that they are, they're not looking at how they're developing their relationships. And something that I talk about a lot is that you, you build these relationships out here, and then a lot of the time with networking, you're moving people closer and closer to you. But some of the time, hey, Chris, um, Chris, I felt really bad tonight because I noticed you just started a periscope at about 8.25. Um, but I always stick to my time of 8.30. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, everyone spotted that. That's the first thing everyone spotted tonight. Um, so whilst you're moving your people closer and closer to you, you, you start. Say Yaroon is, is on this periscope tonight. I've never spoken to him. I, I, I don't, right now, Yaroon, I don't know who you are. I'm going to look at your profile a little bit later. But I know that if we keep in touch over time, then you'll be moving closer and closer to me. And who knows what will come of that relationship. But I also know that if I stop communicating with you, I'm leaving you out there or even moving further away from me. But actually by... Um, by keeping in touch, by keeping in touch with people, by following up, um, all right, Shag from Stoke, hello, Jonesy9044, hello, um, talking about networking here, by the way, um, and yeah, that's it, you agree, your own, um, something that I've been talking about a lot, um, lots of things make me laugh, hello from Stoke, um, I'll go and have a look at your profile properly in a minute, um, when I'm finished this, and talking about networking, but yeah, I talk about that a lot, about moving people closer and closer to you um, and doing everything that you can to, to attract people to you, to, to pull them closer into your network. The thing is, a lot of the time, you don't really know. I'm just checking my Twitter comments as well. Um, a lot of the time, you don't really know where people are, whether they're out there, whether they're in here. I've, I've been to a couple of networking events recently and people look... I didn't know had moved closer to me, suddenly decided to buy either coaching or, or come on the networking retreat. People who I didn't know had moved. Um, that's good to hear. I'm, I've been in touch with that um, organisation too today, Rachel, and I'm really glad that we both um, are getting something out of it. I'm really, really glad about that. That makes me smile. Um, 
Networking does work, of course it does. But actually networking doesn't work on its own. It only works if you do something with it. Um, I think that's really important. Hey, tell you what I wrote down um, the other day. Um, you're moving in next door. Um, right, something that I wrote down the other day. Making it easy for people to buy from you. And I'm not going to talk about that too much because we talked about it a load last week. But when I sent out my email last week, one of the things that a load of people have responded to is the expression that I used, instead of building obstacles, you should build shortcuts. What I find a load of people do after networking events is that they... Da, 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 da. Now, Yaroon, this is something which I've been... This is something which I've been thinking a lot about tonight. That's really timely, actually. Um, it's... By recommending other people's services, you certainly do that thing of moving them close to you. And those very people may, may buy from you in, in future. Um, by recommending other people's services, you, you certainly make a lot of friends out there who, who may well buy from you in future. It's, it's a difficult one if you, spend your, if you find yourself sorry, spending more time recommending other people's stuff than, than you are your own. Um, but I constantly, actively recommend other people's stuff if, and only if, I believe in that person. For example, I've recommended Lee Rickler, uh, his website services. I've recommended them to a load of people recently because I absolutely believe in what he does. Um, I wouldn't be recommending him if I didn't completely trust him to deliver on it and completely believe in what he does. That's really important to me. But I do, um, at a networking event on Friday where, where Sam, who's on this Periscope, was, was there, I, I'll come back to that. Um, what if someone you recommend lets another person down? I will come back to that. Um, so, Jeroen, you and I will, will keep in touch, but as an accountant, that spot is often taken. Well, go to networking events where they don't only have one accountant in the room, um, and also, um, I think that's what you're referring to. Don't forget that people change accountants along the way as well. Um, it's not fixed for life. I know it's difficult to get people to change accountants, but they do. Um, Rachel Shallow, um, I know that you've just come back. I'm going to answer your question. I make a real big distinction between whether I recommend someone because I've done business with them over a period of time, because I've seen them do business with other people, and that I know that they're brilliant, and I'm just Lee Rickler rocks, I'm gonna mention Lee Rickler again. Um, so I would thoroughly recommend Lee Rickler to anyone, because I've, I've done business with him, I know he's awesome, I've seen the way that he works with other people as well. That would be a recommendation, and, and if Lee let someone down, which he wouldn't, um, then I would know that, um, that, would, that was completely out of character, and, and, but I have complete confidence recommending him. That's a recommendation. Um, someone asked me the other day um, if I knew anyone who sells those brilliant business cards now with, with video in them. Um, and I do know someone who does that, and I, I gave them the details, but that's not a recommendation because I've never done business with the guy. I'm sure he's brilliant, but I've got no evidence of that. And I make it clear that... On that occasion, very often, I'm just um, passing on information. I'm not recommending. Get along to your own. It, it's worth getting along to networking events. Um, yeah, let's have a chat. I, 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 people do change accountants, but also quite a lot of people who go networking are startup businesses as well and might not have an accountant in the first place. There are also different types of accountants, chartered accountants, management accountants, so, so on, and finance directors as well. Um, and some businesses need more than one discipline as well. Um, but we will keep talking. It's 8.53. Time's going quite fast tonight. Anyone got any other questions about networking that they want to ask? Um, and I will um, I'll try and answer them. Um, so, yes, but let's keep talking in the meantime. Um, or if you haven't got any other questions about networking, I'll have an early night or go to the pub or something like that, which I quite fancy tonight. Um, let me go to a commercial break. Actually, whilst you're thinking, let me go to a commercial break. Have a look at, if you're really interested, if you're really interested in networking, have a look at the networkingretreat.co.uk, which is my event in the south of England, the networkingretreat.co.uk. And also, if you're looking at, if you want to bring people closer to you by using 
no, there's not many places left on the retreat. And based on a conversation that you and I had very early this morning, Petrina, I'm saving one for you. Um, so, um, da, 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 da. so what questions was I answering? The networking retreat. Also, if you're interested in using content marketing to pull people closer to you, then have a look at the Content Marketing Academy, which is also in September and is in Edinburgh. Well worth a look. I'm speaking there. Um, everyone still has to make their own judgment, even if it's a recommendation, says Michelle. Um, Chris, we talked earlier on in this scope, actually, about systems to follow up with people. I have separate sets of systems. I use a CRM system constantly um, and I audit my networking conversations, which is what we talked about earlier. I look back on the week that's just gone and try and remind myself if there's any conversations which I've slipped. I use a CRM system and I use Evernote as well to follow up with people. Joe, um, how many times do you follow up before you go in for the kill? Um, I'm speaking at the Business Networking Show, Wolverhampton, on September the 18th as well. Sam, well, re um, well reminded. Um, Joe, how many times do you follow up with people before you go in the kill? I, I think that's how long is a piece of string. Um, very often, if it's something like, if it's something like the book, and I'm at a networking event and someone says they're interested in buying the book, um, then I tell them it's a tenner, um, and I also carry a um, credit card machine with me, because with a, um, a low ticket price like the book, um, I think it's, I can move very quickly, Joe, to, to invite people to buy it. If it's something like networking coaching or a networking retreat, then it, it may take a few more conversations, it might not. I'll tell you what I will say, though, to Joe and everyone watching this, far too many of you, including me, are actually far too reticent to go in for the kill, are actually far too reticent to ask people to buy from us. And I think something that I've learned about networking and probably learned it even more recently since the beginning of June is that people don't mind. And actually, if people have expressed interest in what you do and you say, would you like to buy one? People don't mind. And sometimes people say no, and that's absolutely fine. And sometimes people don't know what to say. Sometimes people want to think about it. But you know what? If you ask quite a lot of people if they want to buy from you, something staggering that I found is that some of them say yes. And they might have a short attention span. They might have gone and bought something else. They might have forgotten to buy from you. But if you don't follow up and if you don't ask them to buy ever, then people forget to come back to you because they're busy with their other stuff. Joe, you were on my list to call today and then I ran out of time and now it's nine o'clock tonight, so I'll make it tomorrow. Um, do you think that you should work with people you don't think share your values? Um, ah, Rachel, this is really, really pertinent to me. I mean, I've been working with... Um, Everyone who I'm working with now, every one of my clients now, I share their values. I've actually um, walked away from something where I didn't share the same values. It's really easy for me to say that, um, and I've got a big, big conversation tomorrow um, with someone where I think their ideas are far too far away from mine. Um, I'll go for a beer, actually, Petrina. I, I think when I started off um, my business, I didn't have the luxury of being able to make that decision and I ended up writing content for businesses that I didn't like but I needed the money um, and I think I had mortgages to pay and that sort of thing and I think when you're in that position then actually you, you just have to go for it and do it frankly. Um, it's, it, it's really nice to have the luxury to be able to turn business away but I've not always been in that. Yeah, you know, Lola is so true. Um, you know, I only work with people who I really get on with and I think we really dig each other these days, but I wasn't always that lucky. Um, you know, and, and when I was employed, I didn't have any um, uh, option of, of choosing who I worked for. That was up to the company, that was up to the boss. You ended up working with people you really didn't like. But now, I make sure that I work with people who share the same values as me, which means that, actually, if there's a little disagreement, if there are hiccups along the way, that's so much more easily ironed out when I know that everything's coming from a place that we've got mutual respect for each other. I'm going to wind up. I'm getting really dry tonight. I think this is a, a, a first that can only be quenched with beer, actually. Um, so I'm going to go to the pub after I've finished speaking to you guys. Um, 
and I'm going to go in disguise. They won't rec recognise me. Um, we're all, un un I will leave you with that thought, we're all unemployable, Rachel. That's probably why we're all, um, that's probably why we're all self-employed. Um, you, whose integrity do you miss, Sam? I, yeah, see, two of you have mentioned gin tonight. I might go for a gin and tonic. Whose integrity do you miss? Um, show me your network and I'll show you your future. Um, I like that. On that quote from Ian Dixon, I'm going to say goodnight. I'm going to sign off. Thank you for joining in with... Um, my integrity is very much still here, but I don't think that's what you meant. Um, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to go for a beer or a gin or something like that. We're all grown up now, Chris, not cheap cider anymore. And I'll speak to you all in the week, and I'll speak to you all 8.30 next Monday night. Cheers, guys.